I told my Facebook friends I wanted to play her in the movie. Of course, they all think I'm crazy. Anyway, this video is dedicated to them. Amama Ari Nelson, Huntington Beach, California. The family looked in horror as Omaima was thrown from the horse. She simply popped back up and asked for aspirin and vodka to wash it down. This was Bill's new wife, and he was introducing her to her new in-laws. Wait. Let me rewind. I have a habit of jumping to the good parts. Oh, Mama couldn't wait until she was old enough to get away from her family, or should I say her father. Oh, Mama and her mother was constantly being physically abused and raped <laughs> by the father. When she was younger, she went through a female circumcision and sex could be very painful. Omaima grew up in a very poor village in southern Egypt. Her mother finally left with her daughter, running away from her abusive, violent husband. They moved to Cairo's slum called the City of the Dead because shacks were built among the tombs. When Omaima turned 18, she met an American oil worker and they began a sexual relationship. <laughs> Her mother insisted they marry. This was a great opportunity for Amaima to leave the slums and go to America. The American's job was finished in Egypt and they would arrive in Texas and marry. Needless to say, the marriage did not work. Amaima was in a strange country, but she would fend for herself and make use of it. She could barely speak the language, but she would get jobs as nannies, housekeepers, and Omaima was extremely attractive. She would even land a few modeling gigs. Where all else failed, she robbed, she stole, but she got what she needed. Her beauty was able to keep boyfriends around. She would go from boyfriend to boyfriend, taking, stealing, whatever she needed. One male acquaintance of hers says she tied him to a chair and held a shotgun to him while she robbed him. In 1991, somehow she arrived to Orange County, California. She was playing pool in a local bar and in walks Bill Nelson. He was 56 years old. He was flashy. His friends called him larger than life. He always had a wad of cash that he loved to show everyone. And he drove a shiny red Corvette. Little red Corvette. Hey, do you think Prince got that song from her? Well, anyway, he always wore bright red cowboy boots to match and a big gold belt buckle. He had a cowboy hat on and definitely had a Texan accent. He loved to brag and talk about his money and all his land. And believe me, oh, mama was listening. Oh, Bill Nelson wanted her and she wanted to know what he had. And he was going to have her. They swapped street stories. It seemed Nelson was in prison in the 1980s for smuggling cannabis in his DC-3. So he had a list of stories too. The unlikely pair were married within a few weeks. Bill may have forgotten to mention that he was still legally married but separated from his wife, but he could not pass up the opportunity to marry this young Egyptian beauty. 
Bill's children were not impressed with Omaima. Some of Bill's children were even older than Omaima. Remember, Omaima was 26. On December 1st, 1991, Jose Esquivel would call the police. He told them of a situation involving his ex-girlfriend, Omaima. The story was far-fetched. I mean, it was unbelievable, but the cops had to check it out. Esquivel explained how she was crying and there was cuts all over her. She told him her husband had beat her and raped her, and she killed him. She offered him $75,000 in two motorcycles for his help in getting rid of the body. He went to the police. He would set Omaima up, and the police would investigate the story. The police would arrive to Bill Nelson's Costa Mesa home. Omaima was sitting in Bill's red Corvette on the driver's side. Bill was on the passenger side. He was cut up, though, in several trash bags. The police would look in the bags and they saw human organs, lungs with black spots because Bill was a smoker. She tried to say Bill had killed this man and that Bill was making her get rid of the body while he was out of town, but that plan quickly fell through, being Bill was in the bags. Police got a search warrant, more trash bags filled with Bill, suitcases, and human remains in the suitcases, a broken lamp, and an iron had human hair and blood on it. In the bedroom, it was a soaked mattress, just filled with blood. All the bed posts were broken. In the bathroom, a skinned, gutted human torso was hanging from clothes hangers above the tub. It was bleeding like a side of beef, the cop said. That wasn't even the worst of it. In the kitchen, inside a deep fryer, it was two human hands floating in oil mixed with turkey meat. The trash contained human hips mixed with turkey and cranberry sauce. The refrigerator had Bill's entire head in it in a veggie bag. His whole head was burnt from being into a deep fryer prior. She changed her story. She cried. She lied. She was arrested. She would actually tell the jailhouse psychologist she cooked his ribs with barbecue sauce and had eaten them. She said, quote, It's so sweet. There is nothing sweeter than my husband's meat, unquote. Of course, during trial, she recanted. She had PTSD. The demons made her do it. Miss Nelson would get 27 years to life. She begun a relationship while in prison with a disabled man in his 70s. They were married. They even had conjugal visitation. The man eventually passed away, leaving his wife, Omaima, all his money. In 2006, she was denied for parole. In 2011, she was denied as well. She is eligible in 2026. That's only five years from now. She will be 58 years old and she's a rich woman and she's probably still very attractive and she just may be free.